Good morning, everybody. So I have a little disclaimer to make. Number one, this video you're going to watch is not the best I've ever made in my whole life. It seems that when I get carried away doing embroidery, I, I forget to keep this embroidery centered and it kind of, it's really bad. But I decided not to edit it or to redo it because I had already gone through that whole process of doing it. So I'm hoping that you'll be understanding and forgiving of me. Number two, for those of you who ordered um, this little pattern for this little bag, thank you so much. And if anybody would like to order a pattern for it, I will leave in the notes a, an email address where you can email me to purchase the pattern. So please forgive my very bad video. Enjoy your day, everybody. Bye for now. Well, good morning and welcome back to my channel from a very windy and slightly overcast day here, but surprisingly enough, the sea was beautifully calm for my swim. So Sue was in my class the other day and she gave me a sort of gentle nudge and she said, I'd like to see the continuation of this. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I've just got some cruel yarn and I'm going to make, I think, I'll see how I go. I think I'm going to just make a gentle vine hanging over this kind of, you know, something, something. So as usual, I am going to mark it so you kind of see where I'm going. And once again, for composition, I'm not going to have my vine right on the far side or slap bang in the middle. I'm going to have it rule of thirds. So let's go hmm, up there. Maybe this is very weird to draw. I'll just have it coming out over there and then maybe just maybe I'll have a little branch coming ending up like you know they talk in Australia they end up at the end of their sentences whereas South Africans I think we end down and then that'll allow me to give me some space for more branches now because I am using a cruel yarn I'm going to use a lovely fat millen chenille number 22 needle mainly because I want there's quite a few layers in this fabric in all these fabrics so I want to make a nice big hole in through all those layers so that I don't lose my little bit of fluff from my yarn because I want that as texture and what I'm going to do is simply a stem stitch nothing major but every now and then I'm going to throw in a little bit of a Portuguese knot to give it, make it look gnarly. So, once again, I work with my stem stitch horizontally and I always have, no matter where my curve is, I always have that thread down towards my, as Oprah would say, Mother JJ. I'm not going to make these stitches too small. Oh dear, I'm just tugging through here. How you do a Portuguese knotted stem stitch is it's basically just a stem stitch. And you know where in a stem stitch there's, let me see if I can get a little bit closer for that. There's always, when you're doing a stem, stem stitch, sorry, there's always a section that there are two threads that sort of are overlapping. You're just going to take your needle with the back end and go underneath and gently roll her over to the right and then again underneath the same place gently roll her to the right and then drop this thread down again so I'm going to do another Portuguese knotted stem stitch so she's just an ordinary stem stitch tension is to your left back of your needle gently underneath there stroke to your right stroke to your right and then drop down I'll do one more stem stitch, tension left, thread there, right, right. There, I think I've got enough little nobbles on there for the moment. I will just go ahead and continue with my stem stitch. I don't think I like the shape of my little dead tree very much. Let's do another novel here. I 
birds that you can hear above the wind are called rainbow lorikeets and they are the sweetest little birds but they're so cheeky they remind me of little monkeys and they just chase all the other birds away they're so funny they're terribly happy can you hear my daughter's dog in the bushes here one more and i'll end off some more yarn they're so cute <laughs> So we're going to start a new stem stitch. I don't know if you know anything about a stem stitch. So if, if I do this, it's kind of an ordinary stem stitch. But if I do a staggered stem stitch, I take quite a big stitch and I come back and it's just a small bite of your fabric. I'm really off center on today, aren't I? Um, and then what happens to it is it kind of looks as though it's got a few prickles on it. It might not work so much with this wool. So you can see that they can't, it kind of looks different, you know. Let's do another nobble here, just for fun, for texture. Underneath, right, right, drop down to the wards of the JJ. Tension left. And to do some staggered ones so it's a little bit wispy when we get to the top and I'll end off hmm, a little bit of a thing there anyway let's end that off I make a loop I go through that loop and I go through that loop and that goes into my alt jar Now, because I want the, the bottom of this uh, sort of vine thingamabob to be, I might go back out again. Oops, I'm gonna make you dizzy today. Because I want this to be slightly thicker at the bottom and then, you know, veer off into a branch maybe, what I'll do is I will just simply do another stem stitch snuggled up close to this one over here. Wow. I was looking at some of the YouTube, I've sort of been investigating YouTube and I can't believe how so, so long some of those videos are, wow. They're going for a really, really long time. I think I'll do a Portuguese knotted one here and this time I won't worry about if I'm going through the one oops I don't want to go through there that's my herringbone and then back I go to my next stem stitch now you can see what's happening here is I have drawn another kind of little branch heading off there so i might just do the same thing and just head off in that direction over there it's kind of going to be a kind of dead um half dead kind of thing that i'm doing anyway getting back to the videos that were made uh, I was surprised at how long some of them were. I actually never sit and sew for longer than 45 minutes at a time. I mean, I do sew the whole day someday because I have to because of projects or if I'm writing a book or something like that. But generally, I, I don't sit for that long a period. I set my alarm 
in the kitchen on the stove for 45 minutes and I sew and then at 45 minutes the alarm goes off and I'm forced to get up and I normally spend five or ten minutes either doing a stretch or cleaning a window or hanging up washing uh, it's I think I try and not sit for too long as I want to sew for a long well into my till I'm old so I want to make sure that I don't sit for too long and I also as you know like to work in a hoop and it's it's a highish hoop so I watch my posture as well I sound like Oprah Winfrey today you know lecturing you but I'm not lecturing you that's just me that looks pretty good I might come up over here and because that was a little bit of a divot there I might have to get rid of her and then I will branch off over here if I get too boring you can go and make yourself a cup of tea I'm going to do stem stitch all the way to there and then I'm going to do my little twigs. Now this cruel wool as you can see is now getting too fine for me so I'm just going to say thank you very much I've had enough of you you're not tickling my pickle at this point. I want to make sure that my um, yarn stays nice and thick to give me that texture I think what I really find difficult is actually keeping um, my work in the center of this thing in my bob it's like really odd and strange but I suppose in time <laughs> I will get used to it I'm a little bit all over the shop yeah, no, I didn't like that at all because that that cruel yarn had she had lost her fluff. We can't do that. So I am fussing here and fudging to get this stem stitch. My this thread is a little bit long for me. I don't like working with a long thread, as you know. It's windy today here. We had such beautiful, glorious weather and then all of a sudden it got windy. So I'm, I'm just finding that this branch here is a little bit too pretty. I need to mess her up a little bit. I can't have her too twee and perfect on me. There you go. See, I'm just battle to keep it in the middle but you're just going to have to persevere I'm sure I'll get better with time now that's the simple reason is why I as a rule you see how I drew I drew that I drew this and it really looked lovely and then I, I sort of drew that and while it looked really good with my blue marker the minute I did the embroidery it wasn't right if I if I take my needle out you'll see that dimensionally she's just bombing off in a direction that is it's just not it's just not nice for me at all so what would happen is if i just drop this one down a little bit so i'll do that so i'll end this off this branch off down and then i do you see this is coming it's too short there but so what would happen if i just instead of doing this i took another branch sort of up there how will that look? Let's see, let's see how that looks. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, when we're working for, from a pattern and something somebody's drawn it for you, you can just go ahead because it's been designed for you. You know, you don't have to think somebody's done it for you. However, if you're going to do something sort of more creative and your own thing, You've got to be a little bit more fluid you've got to relax and go oh yeah you know that's what i had in mind yeah 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 that was great but you know it's really not working right now and you have to be you've, you've got to be brave enough to to pull the pin and go no no jennifer that's a bit unfortunate let's just um change direction obviously this is going to look a little bit different once it's got all its little twigs on so 
that to me is quite elegant now. I'm, look, I'm, I'm happy with that. Thoughts? What are your thoughts? Can't hear you. I wish I could. In a workshop, I'd hear you. Beautifully. All right. Now, I'm going to add some kind of twigs to this, my little tree. We'll go back to my yarn. And very randomly, I'm going to add some branches. I'm going to come out and give myself one. Hmm. All right. Now, this is pretty difficult for you to see because I'm, get, I'm, I'm about to couch this thread down. So I've done a stab stitch over there. And now I'm going to, to, get, to make her look twiggy. I'm going to grab her and bring her towards me and couch her down. Now, when you couch something down, it's not, it's not a stitch. You're coming out of one hole, you're grabbing another stitch, and you're going back down into that very same place. So let's take this one right out over here. I'm going to go back to that little join there. This can't be too tight because what I'm going to do, aren't I? I'm going to grab her and I'm going to pull her towards me, giving myself a little branch. Where do you think? Oh, where, do you, where else do you think should be this should be? I think I'm going to come out over here and make this quite long. So I'm going to go back in there. Hello, Laura Keats. <laughs> they are just the sweetest little birds. <laughs> I'm so fortunate to have them in my garden. Oh, that, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to come up from here now. I'm traveling this stitch and I will do another one. So back down there. Decide I'll go over there. I'll grab her, put her in place. So I'm couching. And those little nobbles that I've made in the couching, or, or, or you see, I haven't kept my bottom tidy there, so that will make me unhappy. Let me pull this out. Let me see if I can go a little bit closer again. Green looks and this makes this look so effortless the way she videos. Mm. That's that thread that's making that awkward. We'll come back over here and I'll give her another little gonk there. I think you should try and make them as unfortunate as you possibly can, these little things. Now you see there's that little there's a little bit of space there that I really, really don't like. Easy enough to sort out. I'll come up and I'll just lob her, give her another one. And if she still bothers me, if I still think, oh no, I'll just come and put another one over there. In the middle, Jennifer. Okay, I need another little bit of thread. There you go. So I've just got a little bit more to do over there and then my kind of dead tree on this side is nearly finished. And then what I will do is because it's pretty boring me just doing this over and over and over i will complete my whole tree for you exactly like that and then in the next lesson i'll show you how to you know make her give her some leaves and some berries or something like that so another time we're going to oh jennifer sorry about this people how am i going to remember where to Hold this, my work so it's in the center of this camera. Whew. Learning, I've got to learn all the time. All the time. Anyway, let's see how this video pat turns out. If it's too bad, I oh, I like that. I like that a lot. You see how awkward and unfortunate that is. 
That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. You know, the other day I had a, a, a new student come into my class and I taught her how to do something. Oh my hat, she was so impressed with herself and she said, oh, look at this. And she got up and she showed everybody and I, I thought it was so lovely. Oh, I might leave that. Because, you know, we often don't give ourselves credit for when we do something and we, we're happy with it. I think we should enjoy our stitches and be. I think that that is looking nice and wintry for me. So I will go ahead and do this on there and there and here. And then in the next lesson, when I see you, oh, I've gone 20 minutes here. This is a long one. When this is finished, I will come back and we'll add the leaves and a little bit of berries. And then we'll figure out what's going to happen down over here. Thanks for your time again. Bye for now.